Shalom everyone, this is Ty Green. In the Who's the Target video, we touched on how this foolishness has not only entered into the church, but has taken over in some of them. When sin is celebrated, we're in trouble with God, collectively and individually. Yet, first, one must acknowledge the sin, right? This past weekend, during a month-long celebration of sin and rebellion against God, pride marchers at a drag rally were chanting, we're here, we're queer, we're coming for your children. When I first heard this report, I thought that it may be a mistake. No one would actually say this, but they actually did. Look. Well, have a look at this video taken at a pride rally in Manhattan this weekend. Yeah, they're admitting it. They're coming for your children. Nothing to see here, no problems. Why can't kids be kids? Why is it that drag queens only want to read to young children? Why don't they go to the senior citizens and read to them? Surely, this is certainly disturbing, but this next video is even more disturbing. I'm not going to play the entire song, but I do want you to hear the lyrics. This is intentional and it's evil, but contrary to what you are going to hear, we in Jesus Christ are not afraid of them. It's about the sin, the rebellion against God and what comes next the judgment in terms of biblical prophecy. It's the state of a fallen world that embraces sin. Now we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We're not to be proud of sin, any of it. I can go on about this, but I want you to see this clip. Listen, this is Ephesians six twelve in full effect. Look at this. As we celebrate pride on the progress we've made over these past years, there's still work to be done. So to those of you out there who are still working against equal rights, we have a message for you. You think we're sinful? You fight against our rights. You say we all lead lives you can't respect. But you're just frightened. You think that we'll corrupt your kids if our agenda goes unchecked. Funny, just this once, you're correct. We'll convert your children. Happens bit by bit, quietly and subtly, and you will barely notice it. You can keep them from disco, warn about San Francisco, make them wear pleated pants, we don't care. We'll convert your children. We'll make them tolerant and fair. At first I didn't get why you'd be so scared of us turning your children into accepting, caring people, but I see now why you'd have a problem with that. We'll convert your children. Someone's gotta teach them not to hate. Most of these folks that are into this particular sin believe that those standing on the word of God hate them when this is not the case. When there is an agenda to go after children to convert them, this is evil, demonic, and it's a tool of the enemies of God. And you need to be aware of this and guard our children from this agenda cloaked in sin. 
Look at this warning from Jesus Christ, Matthew chapter 18, verse six. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, talking about children, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Look at this word, offend. It strongs concordance G4624. In the Greek transliteration, it's scandalizo. The Strong's definitions say this, to scandalize, to entrap, that is, trip up, figuratively, stumble, transitively, to entice, to sin, apostasy, or displeasure, make, to offend. In the Thayer lexicon, we see to put a stumbling block or impediment in the way upon which another may trip and fall, metaphorically to offend, again to entice to sin, to cause a person to begin to distrust and desert one whom he ought to trust and obey. You see in this? To cause to fall away. That's the connection to that word apostasy, right? Within this definition. Now, see, this is very dangerous to entice these children to sin. Remember, they said they are going after the children to convert them to go against God, whom we all ought to trust, but to cause them to distrust and to desert one whom he ought to trust and obey, which is God. This is a serious offense. This chant was at a drag queen rally. Men dressing up as women is their practice, right? We all know this. Look at the connection to that and this Bible verse. They want to come after our children. They said this, right? Listen, Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse five. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man Put on a woman's garment for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. They want to come after children and entice them. Watch this to accept or participate in something that we've just read that the Lord thy God says is an abomination. Do you see this? It's an outright rebellion against God. But most don't know what his word says about such things because we remain silent when we should speak. We preach when perhaps we should teach. We cover up what should have been exposed. This agenda is pushed all over the globe. This gay agenda. Guard your children. Teach them what the Bible says about such things so that they can come to know the truth and recognize the lie. Put on that whole armor of God, right? Now, I got to tell you that real peace and real love comes from God. For we all have new mercies every morning. Lamentations chapter 3 verse 22 it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not they are new every morning great is thy faithfulness no matter what the sin you can be set free from that bondage in the name of Jesus living in sin is not freedom it's a deception and will lead to ruin. Those of you participating in the LBGTQ plus lifestyles, I want you to know that not everyone that disagrees with your lifestyle has hate for you. This is certainly not an easy topic to discuss, but I want to encourage you to check out what God says about sin and why he is in opposition to it. It's not just homosexuality, lesbianism, and the like. It's sin, period. 
the corruption of man. God views this sin altogether as a rebellion against him. Through sin, our relationship with God has severed, but it can be restored. That void that we're missing in our lives can only be filled by Jesus Christ. Just ask anyone who knows him. This is about you and God. Please consider this plea through the word of God in the Bible. It's his message of love to the world. And yes, sometimes it does point to correction and the errors of our ways. And therein lies our choice to follow God's way or the way that rebels against him. The way that sets us free or the way of bondage. But when Jesus makes you free, you will be free indeed. John eight thirty six. If the son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Today is the day of salvation. You can be prepared to meet God right now. You must believe in your heart that Jesus died for you on that cross. For we have all sinned and all fall short of the glory of God. For we all have a sin debt that we cannot pay. The wages of sin is death, right? So we must trust in what Jesus did for us up on that cross. We must believe it with our hearts and confess it with our mouths. Jesus was buried and on the third day, God raised him up. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So just come as you are. Look at this. Titus 3 verses 3 through 7 for we ourselves also were sometimes foolish disobedient deceived serving diverse lusts and pleasures living in malice and envy hateful and hating one another but after that the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared not by works of righteousness which we have done but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. All right, I will leave it right there. We must use our remaining time wisely. Amen. Live holy before the Lord. Love y'all. Shalom.